people just started changing around me, like towards me. People would stand in front of me. I finished talking, saying what I was gonna say, and people were just standing there still, and I was kind of, this is kind of weird. Like, you know what I mean? I noticed that life, it just continues to reward me just, just, for, just for taking the leap itself. Okay, let me tell you my backstory here. <laughs> it's actually funny, I was reading No More, no More Mr. Nice Guy last night and I was uh, just looking at all these traits of the nice guy and a lot of them I've dropped, but a lot of them, there's, there's still some things that linger in there. And I remember the first time I actually read that book, just sitting there fuming as I'm reading this book, like, oh shit, this book, like all these, all these negative things I'm reading about this nice guy and I'm like, these are all things that I thought were, were great things, like great qualities to have, right? I thought people would like this, but little did I know that that's what I was uh, carrying along and I wasn't. I wasn't living the dating life that I wanted at the time. I literally wasn't. Um, you know, I get, friend on, I get friends on a lot. I'd wait too long to tell a girl I was interested in her. I had girls who hang around me. I knew they, they liked me. I didn't know how to move it forward. And so I was really scared when it came to being direct and asking for sex and asking for, you know, ultimately what, what is you actually wanted. And so um, that's really why I sought help because I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to navigate that. And so I found these guys on YouTube, like most of you guys did. I started watching Brian's video about the nice guy and, I, and uh, and he was hitting it spot on about all these traits that I wanted to kind of get rid of and I wanted to start to live a more fruitful life, really. So I came to an event similar to this on a Wednesday night, <clears throat> probably about, about seven or eight guys there and heard Brian give his talk and I was convinced this is what I wanted to do. So I took the first workshop and um, Brian pointed out a lot of things to me that I didn't know that I was doing to actually, to push people away, push women away specifically, like closing off emotionally, I mean, even though I was vulnerable, like I, I wanted to shut it down because I felt so much and I didn't like feeling vulnerable. But like feeling vulnerable didn't feel good. And I always saw vulnerability as a weakness because that's what we're really taught in society as men, right? It, being vulnerable is weak. And so, um, you know, I want to shut all that stuff off. And Brian started to kind of show me that it's a, it's a great thing to have. It's a great trait to have, a great quality to have. So the more I embraced it, the better it got after I got out of that workshop. So I would go to work the next Monday, I remember that. And, working in on my attention skills and being able to look people in the eye and being able to be comfortable and relaxed. And people just started changing around me, like towards me, people would stand in front of me. I finished talking, saying what I was gonna say and people were just standing there still. And I was kind of, this is kind of weird. Like, you know what I mean? Where usually it'd be me darting away not giving them eye contact, kind of, kind of scared to look in their eyes. And I was starting to notice that shift, especially with women. And so it made it a lot easier to ground and connect with women, and have longer conversations and, you know, eventually dates when I was actually going out and approaching. Like I said, it was working. It was, I was getting everything that I actually wanted out of it, so I kept showing up. And the thing about the experience workshop is it's one of our intro workshops, but if you complete that workshop, you can come and assist in it for free. And so every time they would have one, probably once a month, once every two months, I would come and I would show up and I would sit in the back and I would listen and I would take notes and it would just reinforce everything that I had already learned in that first workshop. And um, like I said, it just kept getting better, kept getting better. You know, Brian talks a lot about stepping into tension and playing a bigger game and living a bigger life. And I really wanted that. And I started to really believe in myself as I went further with the work. And I remember the first thing I had ever done with that was I bought a ticket to Japan. I wanted to go really bad, but I had spent my whole life waiting for my friends to be able to be like, oh yeah, let's go, let's go, let's do it. And they were never ready. And so I remember I bought a ticket one day and I just blindly clicked confirm on the flight. And I was like, oh shit, like I'm really in attention now because I just spent like $700 that I, that I really didn't have. To, to, go to, to go to Japan and see it. And so I uh, went there for four days. They changed my life, like changed my life. And ever since then, I've never really stopped stepping into attention in that way too. Like I just booked a, ch a flight to Brazil the other day. Uh, the same thing, it's just like, every time I've ever stepped into attention, I've noticed that life just continues to reward me just, just, for, just for taking the leap itself. It's a lot of stuff that you learn in here when you start doing this kind of work, that life's gonna keep getting better and better and better the more you actually step into the attention. It's gonna get a lot easier. And as a result, you guys are gonna to wanna to play a bigger game because the tension level that you guys are at now is gonna become a little bit boring and you guys can expand and try some things that are a lot more beyond you. And that's when it really starts to get really interesting. Let me fast forward. Uh, took some more workshops, got a lot better with women. I wanted to get even more better. I wanted to kind of uh, really work on the attraction and seduction side of everything. I went to Bucharest, they have a week long workshop in Bucharest and I really wanted to be in that container because it's like six days straight of like nonstop model work getting you down to your body, getting all your stories, your insecurities to come to the service so you can process them. And it was a journey going out there and doing that, man. Like it literally changed me the first trip I went. And so I wanted more of it because I got, like I said, again, once again, it got better, life got better. Started playing a bigger game, started stepping into more attention. 
<clears throat> and I was really enjoying the benefits of it. So there's no reason to stop, right? Went back again the second time. And I would say that's when dating really, really, really changed for me. Cause um, I had lost a lot of the nice guy. I had lost a lot of the uh, the fear around approaching women. So that trip, that trip alone, I probably dated more girls on that trip than I have had than I had <laughs> than I had in a single year. Any any one single year of my life. And I remember that being like, what it really did was give me that abundance mentality. It's so once you have that abundance mentality and you come back to LA, you start to kind of be like, you start to be a little bit more choosy when you come back. And so when I came back to LA, it was kind of like, I was being a lot more selective about the girls that I actually wanted to talk to. And uh, as a result, the quality of girls got better. You know what I mean? I was, I was talking to meeting girls that can go more, that can dive more deeply. And it wasn't just on the surface, like trying to get sex and trying to get this. It was just more like girls that I could actually connect with and see myself potentially dating, like long term possibly. And, um, yeah, man, it just kept expanding. Because when I started all this, I wasn't dating at all. I didn't know what code approaching was. I mean, I knew I would meet, I would see girls on the street, would make eye contact, but I'd get scared and I would never, I would never go back and talk to them. But I always knew something was there. I was like, why does she look at me like that? I don't get it, da, da, da. But now it's just like, I'm way more certain when I see that kind of stuff going on, I'm like, okay, I get it. I'm gonna go back and talk to that girl. And so um, that's pretty much been my journey with this stuff, man. And it's continually getting better and better and better. I think that's about it, man, to sum it up. Any questions? Of uh, uh, business, so that's a good question. Actually, um, well, I quit my job when I was in Bucharest because I was really just falling in love with traveling. The idea of being in Europe, I loved it so much that I quit a job that I had for 10 years. And I remember taking the leap on that. And because I, I heard Brian talk about, you know, he talks about Richard Branson, he talks about all these guys who who take take risks, like David Nagel, for instance, he's, just a, he's, a, he's a coach and he um, makes millions and millions of dollars. And so I quit my job. I didn't have a backup plan. I didn't have any money in savings. I quit the I quit the job, and I struggled for about probably five months. I didn't have any money until I started doing like Postmates or something like that. But I remember um, being happy at that point, like not having a job but still being able to get up and do what I wanted to do every day, which was go out and, and meet women. It sounds it sounds it sounds, <laughs> it sounds really irresponsible at the time, but it was just like I was learning so much. I wanted to compound it. And Brian always talks about the one percent compounding. And that's what I did. I went out every day for probably about two months straight to the beach and I just approached girls every day, every day, every day. And it compounded like clockwork it did. And um, so probably about seven months into that, six, seven months, uh, Brian mentioned that he wanted me to be a coach. And at the time I was like, I don't think I know enough yet to, to teach guys. And he was like, yeah, you know, you kind of get it as you go along. And that's, you know, that's another level of tension and stepping into something that you're not sure about, but just kind of seeing it through. And it's proven itself time and time again to um, have made me a better coach and also made me better at what I do, you know, which is going out and meeting girls and being you know, able to teach stuff to you guys. So, you know, this is what I do. And this, I would have never had this opportunity had I not quit that job and taken that step. And I absolutely love doing this with you guys. I love seeing you guys grow. I love hearing you guys' story. I do take our workshops. We, me the, and the coaches, we literally get off on that stuff. When we sit at home, we talk about it, hear about you guys growing. It's just like, we knew it already. But to hear you guys' stories, it just concretes everything that we've, we've been taught and that we do teach. And once again, another level of stepping into attention. I was doing DoorDash and I was doing Postmates because it was, it was, I was making some money. I didn't have a job at the time. And it was making ends meet. It was, you know, I guess you calculated, it would probably be about minimum wage or below it, but I was making some kind of money better than none. And uh, Dave was, Dave had mentioned, you know, it put me in some tension. He was like, you, should, you need to sell your car. And I was like, huh? That's a, that's a term. Yeah. <laughs> You know it. Like you need to, you need to sell your car because you'd be better at you'd be better at doing sales, right? And I had never done sales before. It was scary as hell to get rejected, calling people and stuff like that. And he was like, as long as you have your car, you're gonna keep going back to Postmates, you're gonna keep going back to DoorDash because that's what you that's what you predetermined to do because that's all you know is to work to trade your time for labor, take your time for money. And that was only that's the only concept I was raised with. And so he's like, you need to sell your car. And I remember sitting there one day, I was like, I'm not selling my fucking car. <laughs> like, there's no way I'm selling my car. And uh, sure enough, this is how life works. I had a friend, all of a sudden, he was looking for a car. And the same as that car I, was, I had, he was looking to buy one. Just ironically happens to work out like that. The universe always does shit like that. And it, it, so I sold him my car. I told Dave I would just work on doing the sales. And as a result, yeah, the sales have gotten way better. And I made a ton of money doing sales. Probably way more than I have ever made in um, a year, even working at the job that I had, which is about... 40,000 a year, benefits and all that stuff. So that's, uh, that's 
the rewards of stepping into tension and putting, your place, putting yourself in a place that's uncomfortable for a while in order to get what you want in the long run. Yeah, we're willing to lose everything to have everything. Yeah, Most people aren't. Yeah. Luckily, you were in a place where you never had a lot. You grew up in poverty like I did. You didn't have a lot. Yeah. And so it was easy for you to give up. But the average person isn't willing to lose everything. You know, I, I, I reached a point where I was making good money and then I would give it up again and walk away. I can't tell you how many great jobs I've walked away from. Great uh, potential jobs just because they, uh, I knew I wouldn't be happy there. I knew it wasn't going to fulfill me. I knew it wasn't great the life I had in vision, So I just kept figuring it out. And I was willing to, live, to be broke and poor and live in my car to get to where I wanted to be. And that's why I travel the world now and have such a great life. Because we're going to use everything to have. And you'll see that consistently with very successful people. Most of them self made, they weren't born into it. You'll hear stories of them living in their cars, sleeping on couches, um, you know, all this stuff. But what that does is it deletes all their fear of poverty. And when they lose the fear of poverty, all that's left is success. Because there's no more fear of losing everything. And then if they can let that go faster, they may not even have to have that experience. Some people don't. But Jim Carrey lived in his car, Jewel lived in her car. There's so many successful people. They're millionaires and billionaires now. They've lost everything they had.